What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maraba MUA. Um, thank you for stopping by for another video. Um, this is a dramatic eye look. Um, I have been thinking about this eye look for a while and then I watched some RuPaul's Drag Race um, previous contestants drag makeup tutorials earlier and I just got so inspired to try something different with foundation, with laying down so much more foundation, so much more contouring and highlighting and just really trying something different, stepping out of my comfort zone um, with the way I did my face. I think it turned out pretty good. So if you want to see how I created this eye look, then keep on watching and always don't forget to like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And you can follow me on all of my social media at MaribethMUA. And thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. All right, so I already primed my skin with the MAC Fix Plus Spray, and then I did put on some of the Dr. Brand Illuminizer Primer. I'll have everything listed in the description box below. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows, and I'm gonna do my Anastasia Beverly Hills eyebrows. Uh, you guys have seen that tutorial on my channel. If not, I'll go ahead and link something up here so you can go ahead and Click on over to that right now if you'd like, or you can just stick around and watch me do it right here. Um, so I just kind of wanted to do like a life update talk through video. Um, some of my friends watch my channel, so this is basically for you guys, I guess, if you want to know what's going on. Oh, sorry, my phone. Um, if not, then um, if you're not, you know, one of my friends in real life, but you guys are still my friends online, then this is just kind of to let you know what's going on and um, maybe some stuff that you can relate to. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and do my eyebrows to start with, so don't mind this big bulky mirror. Um, I hope you guys can still see me okay. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do like a talk through video. So I apologize if this video is longer, but if you already heard me say that in the intro that I haven't recorded yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let me start from the very beginning. Um, once upon a time, I was obsessed with um, powerlifting and um, things like that. So I wasn't doing like the whole CrossFit thing, but I was obsessed with, um, you know, doing really heavy squatting and um, deadlifting and I just thought that that was like the most important thing in the world as you know a female was to be um, very strong and I followed a lot of um, bodybuilders. I wasn't into like the bikini stuff um, but I was really into like the very very strong girls like Deanna Lynn Bailey for example and I actually completely stopped following her because I was like this is just ridiculous. Um, not that she's ridiculous, but that it was ridiculous that I was trying to, um, be more like her in the sense of, like, being able to shoulder press 50 pounds and squat 200 pounds and it was just like an unattainable goal for somebody my size and, um, I wasn't able to consume three to 4,000 calories a day and like 300 grams of protein a day, but I sure as hell tried for a while. So anyways, so I got into lifting and um, I was taking supplements and things like that. I never took steroids or anything because I don't do drugs. <laughs> so I just took like all the creatine and you know whey protein, CLA and stuff like that, which um, CLA and whey I still take because I just like the way it makes me feel. Um, 
But yeah, so I got my heaviest squat, I think I got up to, was around 200 pounds, maybe just a little over 200 pounds. And um, I think I was able, I think my heaviest chest press was like 100 pounds. And my deadlift got up to like 185, I think. Um, so, you know, at that time I weighed about 104 pounds, so I was squatting almost twice my weight and I was deadlifting more than my weight, almost twice my weight, and then I was basically chest pressing myself. Um, so I thought I had good form and I thought that, you know, everything I was doing was fine and I ended up getting a boob job, so I couldn't chest press anymore, which I was fine with. I got my boobs done because obviously from all the lifting, I lost my breast tissue because when you build a muscle in your chest, you lose the fat around your boobs, which I was fine with for a, for a very long time. I was a hater and I didn't think girls should get their boobs done and I just thought it was ridiculous. But then, you know, come to the time when I went from almost a C cup to an A, and then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. If you're not happy, change it. And so now I don't, you know, I don't do plastic surgery at all anymore, and I was a hypocrite for a while. But anyways, um, so I got my boobs down, and I, you know, was off from the gym for a while, but... No, that was all I cared about when I was recovering was like, oh, when can I go back to the gym? When can I go back to the gym? So then I went back to the gym and I stopped doing pull-ups, stopped doing chest presses, anything chest. And really, girls, it's kind of pointless to do chest. I mean, you can do flies to get rid of like your armpit fat, but like chest presses and stuff, like unless you're like a bodybuilder and you're competing and you actually need to show that muscle to somebody, for approval, there's no reason to be exercising your chest as a female. It's just, it's just gonna ruin your boobs, you know. And then if you have your boobs done and you do chest presses, you're gonna split your boobs. You're gonna have a space in between, aka a refund gap. And it's not the doctor's fault; it's usually your muscles' fault. Um, but anyways, sorry, I keep going off on random tangents. Um, so I went back to the gym and I, you know, I couldn't squat as much. I couldn't really pull down as much either, like when I was training back or anything like that. But I still like tried my hardest, and that was in June of 2015, I believe. And then, then fast forward to March 2016, I went on a trip to uh, Washington D.C. and then. Uh, that was to see my dad's side of the family and then went up to Toronto, excuse me, went up to Toronto, Canada to see my boyfriend's extended family, his cousin, cousins and other family up there. And the weather in Toronto was so freaking cold. So I am from Arizona and I've lived out here, at that time it was about 10 years but now I've lived out here for, you know, over 10 years. Actually, I think it was like 11. So you could basically say I'm like a native. Like when you live in Arizona for a long time, like your blood changes. So <clears throat> not being used to the cold, I was used to when I lived in Washington because I'm originally from Washington State. And I, you know, when you lived in Washington, like you were used to the cold weather and like you, when it's really cold, like you can, like feel your bones, like, cause it's, it's so fucking cold. And then when you go to Arizona, you don't really feel like when you have achy bones or anything because it's so hot out. So your body's always kind of relaxed. You're always in this kind of comfortable state. You don't ever feel like super achy or anything. I don't know how to explain it, but your bones and your body just feels like more relaxed all the time because it's, um, it's warmer out here, so you don't notice things like if you have like back pain or anything like that. So anyways, so we go up to Toronto, Canada, and like my back hurt so bad. 
I seriously was drinking every day that we woke up, I would start drinking because I didn't have any pain medication, Advil wasn't working, ibuprofen, none of that shit was cutting in. So I was like, well, I'm on vacation, so I'm just gonna like have a whiskey on the rocks every day and drink wine at night. I was literally waking up and having like Irish coffees, whiskeys on, whiskey on the rocks, and then like wine at night to go to bed, just to like kind of keep myself in this consistent buzz state so my back wouldn't hurt. And my poor boyfriend, he's like trying to, you know, show me the city and we're trying to like check out all the creepy cemeteries and like he can't even really like do much because he's worried about me and I'm like straggling. So it was a really good trip, but obviously we had those issues. So that was when I realized like something's not right. Like my back is not right. So we get back from the vacation and my boyfriend was like hey we're gonna get you in the physical therapy and you know you probably are just like having all this um pain from not stretching enough from the gym you know you're lifting really heavy like you gotta chill like you're just doing too much and i was like yeah you're probably right you know i could warm up more and that's probably all it is and everything like that so I come back home, I start going to physical therapy, I'm doing decompression, and I'm getting adjusted like two to three times a week. It's just like ridiculous. It's so tedious and it just sucks. You're just like laying there strapped up and you have nothing to do. You're just like staring at the TV or you're listening to the chiropractor's bullshit. It's just literally just like torture. You're just like so fucking bored. So imagine spending like an hour and a half, two hours a day in the gym, and then you have to spend about an hour, hour and a half at physical therapy or, you know, the chiropractor's office, like two to three times a week. You just like are totally stuck in this cycle. So after a while of like doing the appointments, um, things just weren't getting better. So I just used the matte concealer, by the way, and to outline my eyebrows. And that was the Anastasia Dip Brow that I used. Um, so next, I'm gonna prep my lids with the MAC um, Paint Pot in September. So anyway, so I like was not getting better. And I told my boyfriend, I was like, none of this is helping. My back is still killing me. I'm sick of going there like two to three times a week and nothing's working. Like this is stupid. I don't want to go anymore because it's not helping. He said if it's not helping then that means something's wrong and we need to get you an MRI. And I was like, okay, like whatever, like nothing's wrong. It's just like it's normal. Like this pain that I'm feeling is normal. I thought that, you know, if you just work out a lot and you have back pain, that's just part of the process. And so we ordered the MRI and God, I look crazy right now. So we ordered the MRI and I get the MRI back and I have spinal fissures, I have a crack in my spine, I have a herniated disc, um, and my L5S1 and it was just the fucking worst. It was like the worst news ever. So I was like, okay, so what do we do? And they were like, well, you have to, you know, you have to get surgery. And I was like, surgery, like, okay, like, what do you mean? They're like, you have to get back surgery. You're gonna have to get a microdiscectomy and they're gonna go in and they're gonna take out part of your spine that's herniated or part of the disc and they're just gonna get out all the inflammation tissue and everything. And also I, before this too, I had already tried like steroid injection, trigger points, like nothing worked. Um, so they had to go in and do the surgery. So it wasn't like that was just like the decision. We definitely did try, you know, some just um, less invasive <clears throat> things to relieve my back, but it didn't work obviously. So we did the microdisectomy and I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my eyes. So I'm just gonna zoom this in. I look really crazy. Baby hair. 
And then I need to set my eyebrows, so I'm gonna use the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. Sorry if this video is all over the place. Um, so I go in, I get done my microdisectomy surgery, it's disgusting. All the stuff that they take out of my back. And I wake up and I'm like laying there for a few days and the hospital was like amazing. The staff like treated me so well, I, I mean they just did everything. And I was so fucked up the whole time I was there so it was really an, a pleasant experience because I was just like on cloud nine. Um, so I get the microdisectomy done and like everything was great. I'm going into my melt stack right now. This is the rust stack and I'm going to buff all over my eye in the shade classic with this Morphe brush. Um, so I get the microdisectomy, get released from the hospital finally, like a few after a few days, and like it's like cool, okay, just time to recover at home. Like I've done this before, you know, where you just sit on the couch, catch up on Netflix, and just fucking just do nothing for a few days. And um, then I got kind, of, I started getting like these like slight headaches, and I was like, okay. That's weird, my head hurts really bad. And I told my boyfriend, I was like, I'm having these headaches, is this normal? And he was like, what do you mean, what kind of headache? And I was like, well, I feel like, I feel like I have a headache. Like, it's just like, I have a headache. I never get headaches. And he was like, oh my God, you probably have a CSF leak. Like, my boyfriend is just, he just fucking jumps down a uh, spectrum brush and this color rubbish. And he was like, oh, you probably have, you know, a CSF leak, which stands for cerebral fluid leak, I believe. Basically, the jelly inside your spine, inside your disc leaks out. And uh, what happens is it, it, um, it creates an imbalance in your brain because the, your spine is attached to your brain. And so that whole sac that holds your brain, like, becomes mush basically and like you feel like your head's falling out of your head. It's really weird. I can't explain it unless you've actually gone through it. Like it's really hard to explain. Um, so I started getting these like little headaches and he's like, oh, it's definitely a CSF leak. And I was like, oh my God, you're so fucking dramatic. And he's like, no babe, like you gotta be careful. And I was like, okay. So we contacted my doctor and I could text him because it was kind of like a family, family friend doctor situation. Well, just like friend of Sean's, my boyfriend. And um, he, I told him, I said, hey, I'm getting these headaches. Like Sean's concerned that it's a same stuff And he's like, no, 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 like that's, that's normal. Like you're fine. It's just, it's probably nothing. Like, you know, it's gonna be okay. And I was like, okay. Going back in with just a clean brush. And I'm gonna blend this. And um, I was like, okay, that's what I thought, thank you. And he's like, yeah, 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 if you like, feel like you get more headaches, like, let me know. I was like, okay, whatever. So Sean was like, I bet it's a CSF leak. I bet it's a CSF leak. And I was just like, hey bro, calm down. Um, so then I, you know, the weekend goes past and everything. And then I think it was like Monday or Tuesday. I was. And like this big meeting for work, which there was like 30 people in this room and one of the site leaders was like standing right behind me and I felt like I was gonna throw up all over the fucking room. My head hurt so bad. It was like the headaches I was having, but like a million times worse. It was the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. It felt like my brain was falling out of my head, but it like couldn't go anywhere, but it felt like it was like shooting out of my head. And I just felt so awful. And so I couldn't go anywhere because the site leader is sitting behind me and I don't want him to think like, I don't give a fuck. And I'm like, fuck this meeting, I'm out of here kind of attitude. Cause I'm like so paranoid at work and I always want people to think like, the best of me because I feel like when you're 
a pretty girl, you, like, people always think that you just, you know, don't give a shit and can get away with murder. And so, like, I always try to be on, like, my best behavior and, like, not fuck around at work. And I just, like, put so much pressure on myself. And, um, we're gonna bank. I'm not gonna say we bank, but it's just, like, fucking stressful. Anyway, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna tough this out. I'm just gonna tough this out. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep fucking breathing. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna make it out alive. Like, I was just being fucking ridiculous. I'm gonna go in the crease with this color rust. And, um, so finally the meeting's over and I, like, run to my desk. Like, I, if anybody was in my way, I probably would have pushed him out of my way, but, like, nobody was in my way. So I run to my desk and I, like, go over to my, my boss and I'm like, I have to leave. I'm going to the emergency room. I think I'm dying. And she was like, do we need to do? Like, go, I don't care. Because she knew I just had back surgery. So she was pissed anyways that I came back to work so fast. So she was like, yeah, go do what you need to do. I got you. I'll, like, I'll put it down. I was like, okay. So I grab all my shit and I go down into the bathroom downstairs because it's as far as I could make it. And I'm just dry heaving in the bathroom. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? So I text Sean and I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm dying. I love you. Take care of my animals. I gotta go to the hospital. And he's like, oh my god, like call an ambulance. And I'm like, I'm not calling an ambulance. I'm just gonna go home. I'm gonna lay down for a bit and then I'm gonna go to the hospital. And he's like, you need to just call an ambulance. I'm like, no, I'm not calling an ambulance. And he's like, baby, I have good insurance, just call an ambulance. I was like, no, ambulances is for people who are really dying, and I'm not really going to die, but I feel like I'm going to die. And he's like, okay, well, I'm at work, so let me just finish out my day at work, go home if you can drive, or take a cab, and just lay up on your couch, and then I'll take you, the, I'll take you downtown to, like, one of the big hospitals where they have, like, the best, like, neurologist doctors or whatever. I was like, all right, cool. So I don't know how I drove home. It felt like I was in a fucking dream, but somehow I made it home. And I get home and I just lay up on the couch and I curl up in like the field position, you know, like you're being attacked by a bear. And I just lay up and wait and I kind of go in and out of sleep. And my cat, Carl, he like curls up on me and it's just the sweetest little thing. And then my dog too, she laid right next to me and like they were just, they knew, like animals know when you don't feel good and they just like laid up with me and like waited with me. So my boyfriend finally shows up and he gets me in the car and we go to the emergency room and we check in and I'm sitting in the front room. I'm in so much pain and like, they were just like, okay, here's a bracelet. We'll be with you in a minute in the emergency room. And I'm like, okay. I waited up there for like 45 minutes and then they finally took me back and we're in like the waiting like another area to like be seen by somebody and I tell him like bro like this is awful and he's like well we'll get you something for the pain and I'm thinking like alright cool like this is going to be really good I'm going to get some good pain meds and I'll feel like I'm in a cloud again. And no, they just gave me some meds that like made it feel like I had to pee really bad and like they don't really give you anything good because they can't. Like they, you know, they get people that come in there all the time like pretending. So they gotta be careful, which I, you know, I understand, I get it, but like I was not pretending, I had medical history. But anyway, so we told them like, hey, she just had this one, a uh, microdisectomy, and like my brother was like, it's spinal fluid, it's spinal fluid, like, it's CSF leak, whatever. And he finally like was like, yeah, I think so, I think you're right, like the doctor. <laughs> the doctor was just like, yeah, probably, it sounds like it, yeah, okay. And like, he just seemed just so fucking confused, like he didn't even know what to say. He's like, you really should be going back to like the doctor who did the surgery. And we're like, we can't, he's from California, like we're here obviously, like can you help me? And he's like, yeah, like, we'll, we'll go ahead and, like, we'll help you out and, like, put you in a room. And, like, it was a fucking joke. Like, I just, I was like, oh, my God, this, this fucking place. They don't know, they didn't know what to do with me because I had a surgeon that was supposed to be taking care of me and he was out of town. Well, he wasn't out of town. He doesn't fucking live here. 
So they like put me up in this room and we're like sharing a room with somebody. Like they put you in a room and you have to like sit on one side and then somebody else gets the other side. And this lady was in there because she had really bad stomach pains and <laughs> they ended up telling her like, you just have diarrhea, like you're gonna be okay. She was like, oh, okay. And they're like, you know, it's probably like, you know, your diet, like you really need to be careful what you're eating and stuff like that. And literally like she went back, you know, the nurse left or whatever. She's like, well, I guess we can go now, but I'm hungry. Like, let's go, let's go to McDonald's. And I was just like, oh my God. Like you're in here cause your stomach hurts and you can't stop shooting your pants and you want to go to McDonald's. All right. And it was just ridiculous. Yeah, so they gave me some medicine that made me feel like I had to pee. And then, ironically, because um, Sean had been calling the surgeon like forever, and then he finally got a hold of him. And uh, the surgeon was like, oh, I'm actually in town. I'll come right now. And it was like a fucking miracle that he was in town. So he shows up and he's like, yeah, what's going on? What's going on? We're like, it's a fucking spinal fluid leak. And they did a, a CAT scan, MRI, and then they did another MRI. I was there for 11 hours to wait for an MRI because they kept having emergencies come in that were like literally people bleeding to death that needed to be seen before me, which they deserved to go in front of me. So didn't get an MRI until like three o'clock in the morning. And then finally they released me in the morning and I was immediately transported back to the um, the other hospital that I originally had my procedure done. And then they um, they repaired the leak and then I woke up and I had to lay flat on my back for like three days. Just laying there, eating jello and pudding. I had barely eaten anything that day because I was so sick. And then they like wouldn't let me they wouldn't let me eat anything in the hospital because of all the testing. And then when I woke up, he was like, oh, you know, you can't eat anymore. We can't have you poop because then you'll, you know, you'll hurt, you'll hurt your back again. You'll, you'll cause another leak. And I'm just like, this is my hell on earth. I can't eat. And I'm just laying flat on my back. I can't like move or anything. So. I'm gonna go in with the Kylie Bronze palette and I'm gonna use this black, gosh, I'm gonna use this black shade and I'm gonna black this out. We're doing this black smoky eye, so I'm gonna black the shit out of this. Um, So I finally get released from the hospital. I'm like, everything's great. Time's going by. I'm not, I don't go back to like squatting or doing anything crazy for a while. And I'm just like taking things really slow and you know, doing physical therapy and all that bullshit again. And I still fucking hated it. And then I finally start going back to the weights. So with the weights, I won't go over 40 pounds. For a while, I didn't put anything over my head. And then I finally go back to, you know, starting to put things over my head. Oh, I can feel my, I can hear my dog. She's gonna start freaking out. I can hear her in the background. And I was just being really good. And then I finally like asked my doctor, you know, like, hey, can I, I start putting, you know, start doing this, can I, do, can I run, can I do all this stuff? And they're like, yeah, 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 that's good, like, that's good, you're good, you're good. I was like, okay, cool. And then like my back started hurting a little bit again. And they were like, oh yeah, you know, like if it hurts, just stop and everything like that. And I was like, okay, so if it would hurt, if it hurt, I would stop and everything was good there. And I really like felt like I listened to everybody. I listened to my body and things like that. God, why aren't I using the shade? I literally pulled out my shade shield and I'm not even using them. So. so that way I wouldn't get any fallout, but I'm not getting any fallout, so that's good. That's really good. 
And I ended up running a 5K. It was like the rock and roll run, and I did it for my job. I just wanted to, I, I really tried doing a lot more like stuff involved with my job outside of work because I felt like it was a really good way to show like my participation within the company and just me, you know, trying to be something I'm not again. And this is just like not me. I'm not, I'm not like a, a very social person. And um, so I was trying to do all this extra. I'm just packing in more black here. And then after I ran the 5K, like my back hurt really bad. And that's when I started feeling like, okay, things are acting up again. And so I started getting steroid injections. And the steroid injections were to basically alleviate any pressure or pain. And the steroid injections were amazing. I had three and I really had really good relief, but then it would kind of wear off pretty quickly. And I just was getting frustrated and I was like, okay, hey, there's gotta be something else. So my doctor, not the same doctor who did the microdisectomy, but like my actual spine doctor, he was like, well, we can do ablations where they actually cauterize the nerve so that way your nerves can't tell your body that you are in pain so it just basically is like a blanket because you're telling you know you're destroying the nerve so instead of your nerve being like hey my back hurts your nerve is like huh i got nothing and <laughs> so that you know that was it was a good fix for a while. I'm gonna go back in with the shade and uh, this Morphe brush, and I'm just gonna go in here and blend this out. And so we did that, and that was that was like in March. So that worked. That was it. Once I had that done, I felt like I had most of the relief that I've been looking for and things were good and I was in a good place and I was working out really hard but not lifting heavy. I was doing a lot of HIIT workouts and my core was looking good, feeling strong and my form was the best it's ever been and I just felt like I finally found a place within my fitness journey that was what I needed. Like I was where I wanted to be and I felt like I was, you know, making my body happy and also like getting enough out of my workouts where I was pleased with the results. And um, I was just really happy, like everything was just finally getting better. And then about a week ago, I was doing my normal workout and I woke up early. I was like, hey, I'm done going to the gym at night, it's, it's just too exhausting. I want to get up in the morning and like get my workout done like first thing in the morning so I feel like a hundred percent and then it'll give me that boost of energy throughout my day for work because I just felt like I was dragging at work and just being kind of fucking lazy and um, so I got up early like ready to go. Woke up at five, made myself some oatmeal God, it's just rubbing everywhere. I'll clean that up. Made myself some oatmeal and I was just, you know, doing it. I was being productive, ate, ate oatmeal and egg whites. I uh, did some reverse lunges on the Smith machine, but super light, like only 10 pounds. And, um, Got about halfway through my workout and I was like, yeah, this is so great. This is like such a good day. And um, these are oily makeup wipes, by the way. Um, so yeah, so I got about halfway through my workout and then I went to do, so I do this little like lunge 
uh, set thing that's like really hard and but like I love it. Like I love how hard it is, but it is really hard. It's creasing up weird. So where you go the right leg into a lunge, then the left leg into a lunge, and then you sidestep to the right and you go down into a squat and I do so that's one rep. So the lunge lunge squat is one. I do 15 of those three times. Like a fucking psycho. And um that was the next exercise that I was gonna go into. So I did the lunge into the right, and I did the lunge into the left, and I went down into a squat, and it felt like my whole back and like the upper left side just went and I just felt this like burst of explosion. And I just dropped the weight and I was like, no. Like, no. You did not just fucking throw out your back. Like, how are you gonna go home and tell your boyfriend, I just hurt myself working out. Like, he's gonna be pissed. So I was like, just stretch it out. You probably just like pulled it funny. Like, you'll be fine. Like. Don't trip, boo boo, like no big deal. I'm just gonna zoom this out, see how this looks. And so I stretch a little bit and then I go to pick up the weight. Can't pick it up. I could not lift a 30 pound barbell. Mind you, this is 30 pounds. I have 30 pounds doing this set. And I just done this exercise. Uh, like a day and a half before and um, I was like no I like I can't pick up the weight it's not gonna happen so I'm just like fuck like what do I do like how do I get myself out of here and like what am I gonna say and I'm just like running through like all these things in my head I'm just like what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Like, what am I gonna say? And I um, I finally like strum up the, the strength to put the weight. That's how stubborn I am. I had to move the 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 barbell back on the weight rack because I was like, I can't fucking leave this here. I think I told some people that I just left it there, but I'm like. I don't sound crazy, but no, I like was like, I have to put this away. And so I finally, you know, put the weight back and I'm like <laughs> trying to like not look like I'm in pain and I'm kind of like limping out of the gym, but like trying not to look like I limp because I'm like, gotta look cool. Like don't look like you just fucking hurt your back. But I'm pretty sure like everybody that was working out around me like saw my face and saw that like I fucking hurt myself. And so I finally, I come home and I like call my disability that I have through my job because they obviously know about my back issues from the surgery. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna miss work today. And they're like, yeah, that's fine, you're covered. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I go inside and I'm like hysterically crying to my boyfriend. I'm like, babe, I I hurt my back again. I'm sorry, it's the worst pain of my life. Like, I don't know what to do. Something's wrong, something's really wrong this time. And he's like, something's always been wrong. Like, you don't get it, you don't get it. And he was just like, so over it. He didn't want to talk to me. He was like, fucking, like, he knew I was going to do this. He's like, you know, I knew you were like doing all these crazy workouts again. And like, I told you like to take it easier and you weren't listening. And he's like, I just like, can't believe you did this. And so he, was like so mad at me and I'm literally like laying on the couch at this point just like crying just fucking hysterically crying and I text my friend at my current doctor's office and she is amazing I'm not gonna say anybody's names in these processes but you know who you are if you see this um and I told her I was like I'm pretty sure I threw out my back again like I don't know what to do like can you tell doctor so and so and she's like yeah like oh my god we're so sorry to hear this like we're gonna get you in this afternoon for an MRI so I go in for an MRI that evening or afternoon at like four 
And then the next day I meet with my doctor for the results and he's like, hey, and he kind of, I could just see it in his face. I was like, fuck, I really did it this time. And he's like, you were at two millimeters last time we met for this disc being herniated and now you're at seven millimeters. So that means my disc is protruding into my nerve that supports like my bowel movements. And he was like, you've got to go into surgery again. And I'm like, fuck. Like, it hasn't even been a year. It has not even been a year. It's, this happened May 31st and my surgery last year was like June 23rd. Not even a fucking year. I was like, okay. Just so disappointed. And he's like, I'm gonna hook you up with like another spine specialist. Okay. He's like, or are you gonna have your boyfriend like hook you up somewhere, but like you gotta, you gotta go see a spine specialist. I'm just gonna take some of the glitter glue and I'm just gonna tuck this on to the center here. And then I mixed some of this MAC pigment with some NYX glitter. Do you guys remember these? These are the MAC pigments. I remember these were like the shit for makeup artists and then like nobody uses them anymore. It's very interesting how MAC is just like not as good as it once was. And I don't even think that it's not that it's not good anymore. It's just that people don't reach for it because all these other brands came out with good shit. But MAC used to be like the only makeup that makeup artists really gravitated towards. So I'm gonna reach back in here for this black and I'm just gonna kind of work this in with some black and just blend this in more. Um, but yeah, so back to the story. So the doctor was like, yeah, you're gonna need surgery again. He's like, you know, another micro disectomy. He's like, we gotta remove that that part of your disc that's protruding. And, uh, you know, we're gonna have to do this all over again. He's like, I don't know what you did. He was like, but regardless, it's like we're gonna have to go back in there and uh, fix this up. And I was like, all right, whatever. Like, what can I do, you know? It was like, there's nothing you can do. It's just the worst feeling in the world, but there's literally like nothing you can do. You just kind of have to deal with it. Cause you can't like turn back time on your spine. You just fucking deal with it. It's just, it was just so devastating though, regardless. And oh yeah, I was not a happy camper. I'm just blending this more. That looks pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna pack some more black in this tear duct area. I want this to be fucking really dark. And so, I get hooked up with the spine doctor and he, uh, he gets my MRI and he's looking at it and I go in there and he's like, so you want another microdisectomy? And I was like, I was like, well, yeah, that's what my doctor told me I needed. And he was like, you need a spinal fusion. And I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I'm 29. I need a spinal fusion. And he's like, yeah, he's like, you're way too young for this. He's like, I don't know what you did. And that's, 
That's the funny thing is just like everybody keeps saying like, oh, what did you do? And I'm like, I didn't do anything. But then I'm like, I went ham in the gym. That's my problem. I mean, really. I won't admit it to my boyfriend, but I did. I went too hard in the gym. Went too hard too fast. I didn't let myself feel. I got caught up in my own bullshit in my head thinking I needed to fucking work out so hard. It's just fucking stupid. It's stupid, guys. You just need to fucking chill sometimes. But anyways, so he's like, you gotta get a spinal fusion. And I'm like, fuck. So that's where we're at. Officially a week later, and I am scheduled for surgery on um, Tuesday, on June 13th. So I've been doing some vlogging and... Well, I'm trying, I'm trying to vlog it and talk about it, but it's just hard for me to sit in front of a camera and just talk about things and not, you know, have my hands busy. So this is like an easier thing for me to do, is <laughs> to wear shadow shields and talk about it. Um, but yeah, so I'm scared. I'm high risk for another CSF week. And, um, but if I don't get the surgery, the nerve can completely take out, or my disc can completely take out the nerve that's controlling my bowels, and I can lose control of my bowels, which will lose, which will put toxins into my body and kill me, so it's just kind of inevitable that I have to get the surgery. And I got fitted for a back brace today. <laughs> And it's so funny when you're sitting waiting for these appointments because the people that are in there are so much older. <laughs> and like, not even just like they're in their 40s or 50s. They're like 70s, upwards to 80s. So it just shows you, you know, you really got to fucking take care of your body. But I'm going to take these bad boys off. So I have my eyes done for the most part. I still need to go in here underneath the eye and do all that. But I actually, I'm gonna switch it up today. I've been using like the same foundation for a while. So I kind of, you know, I'm getting bored. So I want to use this uh, Tarte foundation. This is the hybrid gel foundation in the color light sand. And I love this foundation and I swear by it, but I just kind of stopped using it for a while. So I uh, had my doctor fill out my paperwork for my disability claim for my job and I will be out of work till August 31st and it is July, no it's not July, it's June 7th so my claim started on May 31st and I wait out till August 31st so just to give you an idea of like how long it takes to recover and go through treatments and everything, so it's pretty crazy, but if it wasn't going to happen now, it would have happened later, so I just uh, feel like I'm very blessed to um, have my boyfriend in my life, and I don't know what I would do if I didn't have him around. My mom doesn't live out here, I have no family out here. My dad passed away when I was 14, so you kind of just keep those people that are important to you very close, don't take them for granted and, you know, be there for them and they will be there for you in return. So next I am going to go in with my LA Girl Pro Concealer and I'm going to go under the
go in with the cool tan cream contour. I'm gonna go in with my Tarte Shape Tape now that I look like a crazy brown person. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna take this poof and I'm gonna do some RCMA setting powder. I'm just gonna I'm just really pressing in the places that I get really oily. I'm going to press underneath the eye. Just very a smooth powder finish. And then next I'm going to go in with the Anastasia Contour Kit. It's going to be some con like powder contouring here. I'm actually just going to use a fan brush for this. So this is the Spectrum fan brush. I'm just going to go in and powder the cheeks, get that color back in. And I do want a very defined line here, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in with my Tarte Blending Sponge here again with some RC, RCMA powder. And I'm going to make a really harsh line here to take away that bronzer being so blended. Working this all the way to the cheek. And then I'm going to bring a fire here. Okay, I'm going to let this bake because I do want that line to really sit in there. So I have a very harsh line there because this is going for a very dramatic look. All right, so I just cleaned up my makeup counter a little bit. I had to make some more room. I get really OCD while I'm filming and I hate like clutter and mess. So like once I'm done with it, I wanna put it away. So that allowed this to bake a little and I'm gonna go ahead and take this It Cosmetics brush and I'm just gonna wipe this away. And as you can see, that kind of gives it more of a defined line here on my cheeks where it just makes my cheeks look more cut and a little more higher. So I really like how dramatic this is coming out. Um, I would not wear this in a day. I would not wear this to work. I would wear this like on a girl's night out, um, maybe even a little, a little less dramatic. So I am just gonna pop on a little bit of blush on my cheeks. I've got this Tarte color wheel. And I'm gonna take this darker blush shade and this is in the color Ironic. And I'm just gonna put this on the high points of my cheeks. And I just like barely touched my cheeks and now I'm just gonna buff it out. And then Next, I'm gonna go um, back under the eyes 
to finish the eyes and I'm gonna actually use this darker brown shade. This is in the color Rot. So I'm gonna take the tardiest uh, clay paint liner and my Spectrum brush here, and I'm gonna attempt to do a wing. Lashes, and I have these Huda Beauty lashes that I haven't worn in forever, but they're really big, these ones. So I'm gonna attempt to wear these for this look, and then I'm probably gonna throw these away because they're just ridiculous. Whew, these eyelashes are insane. They're just fucking insane. I'm gonna take my Bare Real mascara and I'm gonna go in on my bottom lashes. I'm gonna take my Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. I'm gonna spray this all over my face. And I'm gonna let this soak into my skin for a little bit before I go in with some highlighter. And today I'm gonna use the Artist Couture Highlighter in Gold Digger. I feel like I haven't used this highlighter at all in a while. For my lips, I am going to outline with this uh, Brown NYX lip pencil and then I'm gonna go over it with this Lime Crime uh, liquid lipstick in cashmere. I'm just doing like a very matte lip look, but I still want to overlay my lips. So I am using a darker color to give them an effect of being fuller. All right, so that is um, that's it for makeup. So I'm gonna go fix my hair, I'll be right back. All right, you guys, that completes the final look. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hearing all about my recent life updates. Um, I plan on filming a lot more over the next few months since I have so much free time. So be on the lookout for more videos from me. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this dramatic look. And um, don't forget to like and comment down below. Um, you can also hit the little bell notification next to the subscribe button if you want to receive notifications of when I post a video. And yeah, subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on all of my social medias at Maribet MUA. And thank you so much for all your love and support. I really appreciate you guys leaving wonderful comments. It seriously makes my day so much better. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.